Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to yet another TV video, and this time I've bought a 77 inch OLED, the C10 by LG. So if you've watched any of my recent uploads, you'll know that I've been using the 86 inch Nano 91 for the last couple of months, so you might be wondering why have I changed again, but I can tell you that this is the best TV that I've ever had, and it's perfect for next gen gaming. So this is the 2020 LG 77 inch C10, which I've been using for the last couple of weeks, and it looks so good. Now, this isn't my first OLED. In fact, it's actually my third, as I've had the C7 and the C9 over the last few years. So I'm going to show you some PS5 and Xbox Series X gameplay, along with movies, streaming, the picture quality, reflections, and why I have changed. Now I actually think this 77 inch looks totally normal in my room now, but obviously I'm comparing that to the 86 that I've been using recently. So here's a quick comparison, and this is between the 55 inch that I had before, then onto the 86 inch that I've had over the last couple of months, and then finally back to the new one, the 77 inch OLED. Now I think this is the sweet spot. I don't think it looks ridiculously big, and I still think it looks awesome. And also, it's incredibly thin. If you look at the top two thirds of the screen, you'll see just how thin it is. I mean, it's literally like a few millimeters. And then towards the bottom, it does get a little bit thicker. And that's obviously housing things like the speakers and the ports and so on. But overall, it looks really, really thin when it's on your wall. So you might be wondering, well, how expensive is this TV? Well, price-wise, it comes in at £4,500 or $6,000, but I actually got it in the sale, so I got it for £3,500, which is about $4,600. So it's not cheap, but considering the size and obviously the, the fact that it's an OLED, I don't think it's bad at all. So this TV is pretty big, obviously, but it's no good having a massive screen if the quality is terrible. But honestly, this TV does not disappoint. It's a whole different level in terms of picture quality. It's so clear and it's so, so sharp. So it's a 4K screen, which supports Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, as well as HDR10 and HLG Pro. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I have tested out loads of 4K content, including YouTube, Netflix and Amazon Prime. And the quality of everything that I've played through it looks absolutely incredible. So as it's an OLED, it means that the display is self-lit, so it doesn't suffer from the same issues you get with an LED or an LCD TV, so the dark scenes aren't really compromised at all on this TV. But it's not just the black levels that are impressive here, it's also the colour and the vibrance of the picture as well. So I was watching some Spider-Man the other day, the Into the Spider-Verse series is on Netflix, and it looks really, really good. It really shows off the quality of the TV. So I pretty much only use Netflix and Amazon Prime these days. I don't even have an aerial in the room anymore. But what's great about using these two apps for streaming is there's so much 4K and HDR content out there that almost anything that you play through it looks awesome. So on a few of my recent videos that I've uploaded, people have asked the same question, which is how far do I sit from the TV? Well, the short answer is 10 feet. So from myself to the screen, it's about 10 feet. So it's quite close, to be honest. But it means it feels really immersive as well, whatever I watch. Plus, it's not like that I can see every pixel on the screen, and I certainly don't suffer from any kind of fatigue while watching the TV as well. Okay, so let's take a look at gaming on this TV, which is awesome. So I game quite a lot, at least a couple of hours a night, on either the Xbox Series X or the PS5. Now, as I've always played on the TV, and not a desk or a monitor setup, it means every TV that I've wanted to purchase has had to have a decent game mode, or at least a way to prevent any kind of input lag. But believe it or not, this massive 77-inch TV actually ticks all the boxes when it comes to gaming on a TV. In fact, it's actually next-gen ready for both the Xbox Series X and the PS5. So it's 4K, as I mentioned before, but it's also HDMI 2.1, which means that games can run at 120Hz while available on those games. So it means any games that do support this look so much better and they run so much smoother. So here's the Xbox Series X, which sits here on my shelf. Now for anyone doubting whether this console is really plugged into my TV, well the cable comes out the back of the console, it goes under the carpet, up through the wall and then into the back of the TV. Now I've obviously had to purchase a longer HDMI cable which is HDMI 2.1 compatible. So I've been playing a lot of Forza over the last couple of weeks and this game is so addictive. Not only for the racing but just driving around England and admiring the graphics. Now I knew this game would look good but it's just on a whole different level. I mean it's definitely my favourite game on the Xbox even though it's not a new game. So as you can see here it's so clear and it's so vibrant. I mean it actually makes playing this game even more enjoyable. Now, I know I've had a few OLEDs before, but never one this big, so it kind of feels like I've got the best of both worlds now. I've got a massive TV that also looks absolutely flawless. It's also got a feature built in called ALLM, or Auto Low Latency Mode, 
And this means that when you're playing games, it ensures that you're going to get an almost lag-free experience. And so far, any of the games that I've played, I've had no issues at all. Just remember that if you are using this TV or any TV to game on, make sure that you're using it in game mode, because game mode will turn off all the features and the settings that you don't really need, and it will ensure that you will definitely get a better gaming experience. On this TV, it actually flashes up at the top right of the screen when it's enabled. This is something like instant game response mode. Then there's G-Sync, which actually helps with less tearing and stuttering during gameplay, and this is huge. The fact is, this is the first TV in the world that actually supports this compatibility. Then it's got HDR Gaming Mode, also known as HGIG, so if you're playing any games that supports this, this is definitely the mode that you want enabled, and this will make your HDR games look so much better. Now I've been playing a lot of Spider-Man lately, I actually finished this the other night, and this game looks absolutely incredible. And finally it's got a variable refresh rate, or VRR, so if you're playing on the Xbox Series X for example, well you can take full advantage of this on games like Forza, and if you press the green button on the remote several times really quickly, it will actually show you a menu on the screen and it shows you the stats, so this is pretty cool as well. Then looking at the PlayStation 5 on this TV, and as you'd expect, it looks just as good. So I've been playing loads of games recently, loads of different games as well, from Spider-Man to Sackboy. I've also got Demon Souls to play, but I've not had time to even start this yet, so hopefully I'll do that over the next month. But it's not just the bright scenes and the daytime scenes that looks great on this TV, it's the dark ones as well. So for example, last night I was doing my second playthrough of Spider-Man, and this scene here that I'm showing just looked incredible, I had to share it. So it's quite dark as you can see, and you can see that the black levels are handled really, really well. But the picture still looks vibrant as well, and it's got a perfect contrast. So if you're using an LG TV such as the C9 or the C10, make sure that you're on the latest update as well, as this will fix any issues that you might be facing with the two new consoles. As well as gaming, I watch a lot of movies as well, and over the last couple of weeks I've watched plenty of Christmas films, so although Home Alone looks great and Elf looks incredible, that's obviously not where the TV excels. But some of the other films that I've been watching, like 1917 and some Marvel films, that's where it really shows itself off. It looks absolutely incredible. And whether I've watched films during the day or during the night, whether it's fast-paced or dark movies, everything just looks brilliant. But yeah, so every film that I've streamed to it, whether it's from Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, they all look great. The colours are always spot on and the contrast in the black levels are perfect. So this really is such an awesome TV for watching movies. And obviously with the current situation where we're not able to go to the cinema, it's basically like having a cinema in my room. Great picture and great sound. And talking of sound, a lot of people ask what speakers I'm using. So these speakers here are the Monitor Audio Bronze range. Now they're paired with an Onkyo AVR. Now they sound great, they look awesome as well. I've actually linked to my entire setup in the description, so if you're interested in seeing anything that I've got in my current setup, go to the kit list and you can actually check that out as well. Now one issue that I'm aware of with OLED panels, and they do suffer from this, is burn-in or image retention. Now this is where an image or a shadow of where the image was is permanently printed onto the screen. Now although I've had three OLEDs over the years, I've never had an issue with this, honestly I really have never had an issue. Now a lot assumed that I swapped to the NanoCell for this reason alone, but the fact is I've just bought another OLED and I've obviously spent a lot of money on this screen, so hopefully that shows that I'm not bothered at all by burning and I really have never suffered from it as well. So my only advice is if you are looking to get an OLED and you are concerned about burning is don't have your OLED brightness set too high. So I actually have mine set to anywhere between 50 and 60, so it's not too bright and also don't leave it on the same image on the screen for hours at a time. So if you are gaming, for example, and you are concerned about having menus and your heads-up display, like in Call of Duty on core mode, for example, just kind of alternate. So every couple of hours or so, bring a menu up, wipe the screen, make sure that menu isn't on there constantly. And I'll be honest, I've never babied my TV. So other than having the brightness set to about 50 to 60, I've never had an issue. I really haven't. And it obviously doesn't stop me from gaming on it at all. So viewing angles on this TV are insane, as you'd expect from any OLED, really. So from practically any angle, you can still see the screen with no loss of picture or contrast. Now these angles are quite extreme, so you're obviously not going to be watching a TV from this angle here. But if you're not sitting directly in front of the TV, well you can still see the picture, and there's obviously no concerns with that at all. And this is one of the reasons that I actually got an OLED for the first time when I got the C7. And that was because the TV wasn't flat in the middle of the room, it was off to the side. But I didn't want to angle the TV because I wanted it to be flat on the wall. So it meant I could have the TV flat on the wall and I could still see it from the sofa that was kind of slightly off centre. One issue that I have found with OLEDs in general is that they are very reflective. But that's obviously how we're getting such an incredible clarity and picture because it's not being compromised by a matte screen. 
So for me, it's fine. I sit directly in front of the TV. The only real reflection is a lamp that I have to my side. And sometimes in dark scenes, you can see it. But to be honest, once I turn that lamp off, you can't see it and it doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, if you are watching this and you have a window, say directly opposite the TV, you're certainly going to notice this while watching it in dark scenes during the day. And let's take a quick look at the apps on this TV. So to be honest, if you've looked at any TVs that are from LG in the last few years, they all look the same. WebOS is fantastic. And across the bottom, you can add your apps that you're interested in using. So for me, I've got things like YouTube and Netflix and Disney Plus. And you can actually change the order as well. So the apps that you frequently use, so for me like Netflix and Plex, for example, I can move those to the front, but you can drag and drop those as well. So any that you download, you can actually choose the order that you wish them to be displayed. And around the back, we've got four HDMI 2.1 ports now. So this is great for me. I've got the Xbox, the PS5, my AVR, and the Switch plugged in so far. And as they are all 2.1 enabled, they're obviously future-proof as well. There are also three USB ports, and an optical port, a network port if you're not using the wireless, and you've got a 3.5mm jack as well. So you'll notice that I don't currently have it wall-mounted. Now that will happen, but for now I'm using the provided standard that it came with. Now it looks really thin and it's minimalist as well. I quite like the metal sheet rather than the feet that most stands come with. Plus the small brand on the front looks really nice as well. I think it's great that it doesn't go the full width of the TV. So if like me, you've got a smaller unit, we can still fit the TV on it quite easily. Now one thing I wanted to show you quickly as well is the remote or the magic remote. So this isn't anything new. We've seen this on the last few years of the LG TVs, but it lets you navigate and control the TV so much easier using this kind of magic wand. Now I really like it, I think it makes it so much quicker to jump between apps as well, so hopefully this isn't something that they remove or change in the future. So a few of you might wonder why I've gone for the C10. Well the C10 range comes in above the B10, now the B10 only uses the A7 processor while the C10 uses the A9 processor that's also found in the G10 range. Now also the B10 brightness isn't quite as high as the C10, so if you want a brighter picture the C10 is definitely the better option. Now I did also consider the G10 version, or the gallery edition, but that was another £1,000 or $1,300. And the screen itself, well it's no different to the C10, it's exactly the same, it's just thinner and can be mounted flush to the wall. Now as I like to have lights behind my TV, I've got a LifeX Z strip that goes around the entire TV, I knew that I wouldn't mount it flush to the wall, and I wouldn't get the same glow if I did. So yeah, I think the C10 is the perfect choice for me. So the most asked question I actually received since I changed back to an OLED is why did I do it? What was the reason behind it? Was it because the old TV was too big? Did LG ask for it back? Were the black levels terrible? But the only reason is I just wanted to go back to an OLED. It's just a better TV. It really is. Now, there was nothing wrong with the Nanocell TV. It's incredible, but it's still an LED TV. It's no OLED. Now, I think I'm really, really happy with the choice I've made. So if you can, definitely go for OLED. So yeah, overall, I absolutely love this TV. It's definitely the best TV that I've ever had. There's no question there. It's big enough without looking stupid. It doesn't look as ridiculous as the 86 that I had. And the quality, the black levels, the clarity are just perfect. So yeah, if you are looking at getting a new TV this year, especially if you're looking at next-gen gaming, I would highly recommend picking up the C10. It comes in loads of sizes as well. You can pick it up in a 48, a 55, a 65, and this 77. This is the biggest one that they do. So plenty of choices there. So as for future plans for this setup, well you'll be pleased to know that I do have plans to wall mount this TV. Now I know with the 86 inch TV I didn't do so and so many of you said that I should. Well all of my previous TVs I've always done so. So I've always enjoyed the look of a floating TV with no wires. I think it's a style that looks really clean. So over the coming weeks I will be sorting this out. I will get it on the wall and I will probably update my Instagram quicker than I will update my YouTube channel with this. So if you want to check that out definitely go and follow me there. Oh, and as for the 55-inch C9 that I used to have, I've actually moved that into my bedroom now, and that replaces the Samsung Q60 that I used to have. So this isn't really worthy of a tour on its own, uh, but the C9, well, that's still an incredible TV. It's actually not that much different to the C10. And you've just made it to the end of another TV video, so thank you, I really appreciate it. Now, if you don't mind dropping a like on this video, as it helps me out, and it means that I know that you're still interested in my content, and if you drop a big OLED in the comments, I know that you're still here, so I will give your comment a thumbs up for that as well. And I hope you enjoyed this, I really do. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And you can also go and follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I am very active. Until next time.